happy Thursday. Um, it's been a kind of a quick week. I was trying to think before I got on. What day is it now? And yeah, so it's Thursday. It's been a quick week. Um, just been working a lot. Um, and yesterday I did take the day off for the most part because I um, went with another crafting friend to Cincinnati and we went to say goodbye to and celebrate the life of our friend Mary Lou Stefano. And while I am very sad, um, she is very deserving of her eternal reward and um, everlasting peace. Um, I will miss her terribly. She was a person that brought so much joy to everybody that knew her. Um, and anybody and everybody that knew her loved her. And um, uh, through crafting, she became a dear friend. Um, she attended, I think, pretty much most of my Creative Escape weekends. And she was part of my team. And um, I'm just going to miss her dearly. But I was happy to have the privilege of knowing her and being her friend and calling her my friend. So um, while that's really hard, and this is the second team member I've had to say goodbye to in the last year, um, Sue Bada is the other one who passed away from cancer last year. So a good week. Um, it was a beautiful day yesterday to celebrate Mary Lou, um, and I'm glad I could be there. But um, other than that, I'm just working away at my Stampin' Up! job. For those of you that are new, I am Mary Nabe from Westerville, Ohio. That's a suburb of Columbus, so go Buckeyes. Um, and I do Stampin' Up! as my full-time job. So um, please let me know how I can serve you in your Stampin' Up! needs. Or if you have an interest in joining my team, I would love to have you. Um, I have a team of um, in the 55 to 60 range right now um, of people, number of people. Um, about half of those being my own recruits, so I'm very proud of that, and I enjoy working with my team. After this live, I'll be getting ready for um, a Zoom meeting with my team tonight. Um, I am still not hosting many in-person events. The really the only one I have going on is my Open Craft Day one Saturday a month, which I just started this month. Started up this month because I had to um, cancel others. Um, but I look forward to meeting in person with customers and team members as soon as I'm able to, or as soon as we all feel comfortable doing, I should say. Um, my first announcement is that I have a new class to go, which features the Jar of Love bundle. And the Jar of Love bundle is a stamp set and an amazing punch. So um, on these, I colored with Stampin' Blends, but you can use any coloring tools that you have. Um, Stampin' Write markers, watercolor, pencils, that sort of thing. But it's a fun class. The background on each of the cards, I'm trying to get this just right so you can see with the light. The background with each of the cards is DSP from the In Good Taste Designer Series paper, uh, which I love. It's got 12 different sheets. Um, it's kind of like a mega pack, 12 different sheets. Of course, there's a, a different pattern on each side and you get two of each of those. So a total of 24 sheets, I believe it's $21 in Good Taste, in good taste Designer Series paper, the mega pack, so I love it. You can make tons of cards with it. Um, but just really cool backgrounds and things. Okay, so that is my latest class to go. I have several more. The samples are done. I just need to write up the um, information and then I will get those posted. Um, this week also I'm working on getting out all my paper shares and ribbon shares. Um, unfortunately, a lot of the ribbons are on back order. Um, they were when I ordered them um, as soon as the deadline was met, and I was hoping that some would be in by now, but they're not. So I'm going to go ahead and send those anyways, and I'm um, 
packaging up two other classes to go, and those will be shipped as soon as possible. There were a couple back order issues there too, but those aren't so far out. So all is good. Um, and if you if you are not on my email newsletter and you want to receive it, please message me your email and I will add you to that. That's usually the first place where I advertise my events and my schedule. Um, first place I advertise my classes to go and Stampin' Up! promotions, things like that. But I also have the information on Stampin'Peace.com, um, Stampin my blog, and then I post it to uh, my Facebook group and my Facebook business page as well. But if you just message me, I'm happy to e email you the information as well. My other announcement is I want you. I want you to be a part of the awesome Stampin' Up! community that I belong to. I'd love for you to be a part of my Stampin' Up! team. We are like a family. Um, many of us started out as customers and team members together and have become lifelong friends. So um, I think the greatest thing about my team is that um, we love to share, we care about each other, um, we're friendly, we're welcoming. It doesn't matter if you have a big craft space or a little craft space. It doesn't matter if you just want to join for the discount and be a hobby demo, or if you want to build a big business or a little business or anything in between. Um, we're here to support you, and I will do my best to help you get all you can from being a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, which includes a discount. And our Stampin' Up! deal is always awesome. $99 plus tax, free shipping. That's our standard um, starter kit, or what I like to call the Try It Kit. Um, and with that, you choose $125 of product. So with the amount of product you get, plus the savings of not having to pay shipping, you're saving 38, over $38, $38.50. But this month only, and what is today, the 18th or so? So we have about 12 days left. This month only, you can choose any bundle, any bundle from the Stampin' Up! catalog. That's a stamp set and a tool. So a stamp set and a punch, or a stamp set and dies that coordinate with it. And um, just so you know, we have lots of them. In fact, I haven't counted them up, but I was looking at how many pages we have of those things. And um, it starts on page 165. That, well, no, that's punches, I'm sorry. That's not the bundles. There we go. <laughs> it is on page 168. You can see it has the bundles and it shows you the punch that comes in the bundle and tells you the name of the stamp set and where to find that in the catalog so you can take a closer look. But we have, let's see, one, two pages of punch bundles. And then if you go over to page 173, we have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven seven pages of stamp set and die bundles. And the most expensive one, I believe, is $60. So depending on what you choose for your bundle, that's gonna be another great savings for you because you'll get that absolutely free. And this deal is only good through June 30th. So you wanna take advantage of that. If you have questions about signing up or joining or purchasing that, try it kit, um, please talk to me. I will not pressure you, but I'm happy to discuss the opportunity with you and happy to answer any of your questions. Um, very open and straightforward. Um, and then, of course, after you gather the information, you'll be able to make a decision for yourself. All right, who's ready to do some creating today? Yes? Okay, I've got a great... Um, what I think is a great project card for you to see, um, and then we'll make two cards together, and I will give away a card today as well. Today, we are going to use uh, the Peony Garden Suite for my demonstration. So I'll just quickly again go through the main products of the suite, 
and that is this beautiful Peony Garden Designer Series paper with basic gray, gray granite, petal pink, and whisper white. Really um, just elegant patterns and designs in there. Um, so very, very nice DSP. And the suite also has this dainty diamonds embossing folder, which is gorgeous, and you will see a sample of that coming up. And then the bundle includes the prize peony stamp set and the peony dies. And it is the dies that we're going to be working with today. And it looks very, very overwhelming, but I'm going to simplify the whole thing for you. And we also have some wonderful embellishments to go with this suite, the beautiful gray granite shimmer ribbon. I don't know how well you can see that on the video, but it just has a really light shimmer to it and it's just really nice to work with. And the elegant faceted gems. There's a faceted design on each of them. There's clear, uh, petal pink, and then sort of a, I'd say a frosted white color. And then we also have these wonderful square vellum doilies. Now, I'm not a real doily person, but um, this I really, really like. And I have used it on a card that I'm um, putting a class together with and um, thought it would be great to do some sponging and use it as a stencil. So love all the pieces and parts of this wonderful suite. I'll show you a sample first. So here is a peony card I made, and this is petal pink on very vanilla. And um, I'm going to show you how to make that peony because when I first saw it, it looked very intimidating. All the pieces here, I just kept setting it aside and setting it aside. I used everything else in the suite but this. So um, that's what I want to show you today. And, and then we'll make a couple of peonies and a card. Two cards, actually, if we don't get kicked off here. So how many are in here? I don't even know. It's a lot. 17. 17 dies is overwhelming to me. Just, I don't, yeah. But I watched another demonstrator who had a great demonstration um, of how to put the peony together and how to pull out all the pieces that you need for that peony. So basically, you are taking off 11 dies. The ones that are left are ones that coordinate exactly with the stamped images. You've got a die for this, this, and this flower, as well as these two leaves. And then you have a decorative one um, that you can use to make pretty decorative ed edges on your cards. So I'm gonna set these aside for now, but I'm not gonna let that magnet card go too far. But basically, these are the four dies that you use for the flower part. And they go together very easily. There's a great um, built-in trick here to getting them to all fit together nicely and easily. And then you have three different leaves. And then there are three different accent dies for the leaves like that and then you have this little um, flower center so all in all we've got 11 dies to work with now you don't need to roll things through your big shot 11 times you can actually get all of this on one and I'm going to show you how to do that again very simple gotta be careful I don't let me set this aside for right now don't lose any of those so I'm using my magnetic platform I already have um, a cutting plate on top I've got basically a quarter sheet of the whisper white cardstock and I'm going to use that to arrange all 
the flower petal pieces on. There's four pieces that will make up that peony flower. Okay, so those are the four pieces. I've got a tiny piece of, what is this? Mango Melody for the flower center. And these are gonna fit easily. They, you're not gonna have to crowd them all in and try to fit them. They will fit easily. I've got a piece of Old Olive for the three leaf dies. And you know me, I, I, I like to do good work and take my time, but I also don't like to waste time. So this is a good time saver for you to see how um, you can cut all of these things at once. And then I have a little strip of Mossy Meadow, and I'm using that for the leaf accents. Now remember, your little dies might be jumping around a little bit. If they do and you need to hold them in place, um, use your washi tape. It pulls right off, holds them in place, but pulls right off afterwards. I will tell you with our new cut and emboss machine that will be available for um, customers to purchase beginning September 1st, our new magnetic platform is one solid magnet. So you won't get that jumping around. So I'm excited about that. Oh, and I should clarify, September 1st is when you can purchase the large, regular, standard size cut and emboss machine, not the mini. But hopefully we'll be selling the mini by the end of the year. But all this COVID stuff is messing up the timeline. Okay, so now I'm just going to run all this through my Big Shot. And I have found that everything's been cutting out very well for me just running it through one time. I don't usually run it backwards, but it's easier for me to pull from the side when I am demonstrating. Now I'm gonna tell you, if you, know, if you have a magnet card, put these on the magnet right away and you wanna do the flat side down so that they stick very well. If you don't have a magnet card, just be sure you put them in the envelope or wherever you're keeping them um, real quickly so that you don't lose them. I lost a stamp a couple weeks ago to a brand new set, stamp set, and um, I still have not found it. And I did check through the garbage too, but it stuck to something, so I don't know if I missed it and threw it out by accident or it's gonna turn up someplace else. So I'm gonna put all these back. There we go. Whoops, just missed that. So I've got my three leaves. I've got the accent pieces for the leaves. And Seems like one might be the wrong direction. Not sure. Well, we'll deal with that in a minute. Okay. Now, one thing with the um, flower pieces, lay them out just like this, and you're going to want to lay them largest to smallest, or smallest to largest, but when you're putting it together, you're actually going to start with the smallest piece. Okay, one thing you might want to do on some of these, the petals that will come forward, just curl them very lightly very, and very slightly with your um, bone folder. And if you're making this for the first time, you might want to try it without doing that. But it does make um, for some nice dimension on your flower. And you want to be careful. You see each one has a slit. You want to be careful not to tear that slit off because that is what holds everything together. And I would suggest that you use liquid glue for putting this together. 
Now the first one, the smallest one, you're going to slide into the next size piece, okay? It's going to slide in there easily. And you're gonna say, well, Mary, how do you know when to start or stop or go? Or should it be high, should it be low? Here's the trick. Flip it over to the back and these pieces will match up along the bottom. Okay, so let me show you that again. Take the smallest piece and insert it into the slit of the next piece. So the front is in front of the main piece and the upper part of the slit is behind that first piece. And then what I do is I just lift it up and I put a little bit of glue there. And you might have to shift them a little bit, obviously and line up those bottoms. And it's real easy with those curves to line that up, okay? Then you're gonna take this and slip it through the next size flower piece. And again, you're going to match up those bottoms. And when you've got it close, you just add a little bit of adhesive glue. I guess that's redundant, isn't it? Adhesive glue. <laughs> They're one in the same. Liquid glue. Okay, press it together so it holds nicely. And then you take all of that and put this through the main piece. And again, you're going to line up those edges. Okay, and again, you can see that the slit, the bottom of the slit, is in front of the piece I'm sticking in, and the part above the slip is behind that piece. So it's the same process on each one that you're adding to the next. And voila! There you go, and there's your peony. Now again, you can take some of these pieces and curl them. It's a little hard, if even if you just want to pull them back with your finger like that, it adds some nice dimension to your flower. Okay, so there's your peony. I feel like I got a little spot of something on there. Okay, so there's your peony. Now, as far as the leaves go, you want to put just, before we do the leaves, let's put the center of the flower in here. And I go back to what is the smallest piece that I started with. It looks like that. Okay. And I'm just going to tuck it right in there, just like that. I don't think it has to be in an exact spot or center you can move it around pull it out a little bit push it in a little bit whatever whatever you like I just feel like I maybe I had something on my finger when I started there we go that looks better okay so wonderful dimension and it was so easy to do it's not intimidating once you know what pieces to use and how to put them together together in order Okay, so now we have all these little accent pieces. What I'm going to say to you here is, my tip is, make sure you match up the pieces before you start. Okay, because you can see I thought I had them placed right, but I didn't. So just make sure to match them up, or maybe when you take them out of the big shot, one might have flipped over or something. So match them up first before you add any glue to the pieces. And I just put a couple of dots of the liquid glue on that mossy meadow accent for each of the leaves and then just press them together. Everything dries so quickly too with this multi-purpose glue. And as my friend Jackie would say, 
a dot is a lot. This um, glue goes a long way. A little goes a long way. Remember that. So there's the third one. So the only thing I have left to do now is to put these on a card. And I've already cut out the pieces for a second. We're actually gonna make two cards and I'll give a card away today also. So I'm using a thick Whisper White card base. I like the thick Whisper White and the thick Very Vanilla for card bases rather than the standard white and the standard vanilla because they stand up better. Is anybody, does anybody use the thick? I really like it for my card bases. Okay. Now here I'm using, um, I already forgot the name, Dainty Diamonds I think. Yes, Dainty Diamonds, okay? And if you're like me, I always look for, uh, you know, are there, is there more than one way to use something? And honestly, this is the back, which is flat, but it's so pretty just like that. But then on this side, I have the texture side. So maybe play around with it and see which side you like better. The smooth side or the textured side on your card front. And it might even depend on what um, kind of card you're making and what your design is and what other pieces you're using. But always take a look at the front and back because you might um, prefer one over the other or you might just want to um, add, you know, a different look by flipping it over. Um, Diane is asking, could you sponge edges for the accent flowers? Yes. Okay, to accent on the flower. Um, and I said yes. On this one, again, I'm not sure just how well you can see it, but just very lightly, I sponged petal pink ink on all the flower parts. But I did that before I put the flower together. Okay, it's just easier to um, sponge those pieces individually before putting the whole flower together. Can you see that pretty well? Great question. And I just use sponge daubers with the ink pad. Simple, okay? So now I'm just going to decide where I want that flower. Maybe over here somewhere like this. I think I might actually have one leaf coming off the top of it this time. I'll do one large leaf on each side. And then I'm going to do it this one like that. Okay. Oh, one other, well, I'll show you that tip on the next one. There's another way you can add some dimension to that flower. So I'm going to pop this up on dimensionals. A regular size dimensionals work perfectly for this. When I'm doing something like this, I like to pop up the main flower first on dimensionals. And then, rather than adhering my leaves and trying to position the flower on top, I'm just going to put, well, I'm going to put this right in the center, I think. Like that. And then... I just put a little bit of liquid glue on my leaves and I can tuck them under the flower exactly where I want them. And I can move them around a little bit because I use that liquid glue, okay? So that's an advantage to using dimensionals on your main focal point is it's popped up and then you can slide other pieces underneath as you wish. Whoops.
Okay. Sometimes with something this textured, you need to um, press and hold a little bit longer than I was. And here, I'm just gonna add that right here. I'm gonna put this leaf up on top just to add a little bit more character. The leaves aren't always underneath or behind the flowers. Oh, I love it. Okay, I just thought of something I'm very excited about. Sometimes these things do come to me and surprise me. Oh no, now I can't find it. Here it is. How about a little wink of Stella, okay? I did not um, sponge the edges on the white one like I did on the first one. So I'm just gonna add some Wink of Stella around some of those edges and petals. You might even decide to put Wink of Stella on the whole flower. Okay. I love this stuff. <laughs> if you don't have a Wink of Stella, you are missing out. Maybe a little on the leaves too, on that dark mossy meadow accent part. Oh, and how about the center? Yeah, we might as well just go all the way. Awesome. I'm not sure how well you can see that. Okay, I'm gonna add a pretty bow here with my gray granite um, shimmer ribbon. So that shimmer from the Wink of Stella actually kind of pairs nicely with the shimmer in this ribbon. Trying to get this to lay flat for me, come on. There we go, that's a little better. Snip the ends. And to adhere bows, I always like to use a glue dot behind a glue dot behind the knot. Actually, this side might look a little better. I think it does. Yeah, I'm gonna use this side as my front. And then tuck that right in here. Almost looks like a little, um, well, like maybe something like a wrist corsage or something like that that you might wear. Still isn't laying quite as flat as I want it to. So that's a little better. I might just want to tuck an extra glue dot underneath that bow. I don't do that very often, but this one's kind of bothering me. <laughs> There we go. There. And nobody even knows it's there. And I think we could use a little bit more bling. So I'm going to add some of the Elegant Faceted Gems. I agree, Diane. It does look elegant. It, you know, simple but elegant. But, you know, when you give this to somebody, it's going to be wow. You know, they're going to think, what? How did you do that? And it can be your secret whether you tell them or not. I'm going to use the frosted white gems. I just think it kind of looks neat with this whole. And sometimes I like to use different size gems too. In this packet, there's, um, actually I want to pull these a little bit closer, I think, closer to the flower. Um, in this packet, there's three different ones and they each have two sizes. So lots of flexibility and alternatives. So what do you think? Hearts, thumbs up, it's okay, it's, I love it. 
personally. Okay, let's do one more. And I already have the pieces cut for this and I have a little bit of a variation to make. And I did not make these samples ahead of time. It's just kind of things that pop in my head when I'm preparing after I've made my sample. And you can see what the petal pink looks like with the vanilla there as well. But again, I'm using thick Whisper White cardstock. My DSP layer, my designer series paper layer, also from the same suite, Peony Garden, is five and three eighths by four and one eighth. Oh, Julie, thanks for sharing. I'm not catching all the comments, but if you are somebody who shared before or during or you plan to share afterwards, thank you very much. I do appreciate it. Um, I think this card I'm going to make vertical instead. Now, this um, is just a little, I believe it's half inch. Oh, no, it's, um, I'm sorry, five eighths. Little five eighths strip I cut off from the main piece. And I'm just going to adhere that as well. I see Tammy's back. She was on earlier. My crazy Facebook. And when I was listening to the news this morning, um, we're supposed to get thunderstorms late afternoon. So I thought, oh, perfect. It won't, you know, interrupt my Facebook Live at 2. Well, it happened. And now it's after 4 and there are no storms here. But, you know, we do our best. But thank you for always being so patient with that because it is way beyond my control. Okay, so actually, since um, I think it was Diane mentioned the sponging, so let's just do that. Because I talked about if you want to sponge the edges of your flowers, you should do that, um, where's my petal pink? You should do that before you put the peony together. If you're just jumping on, you probably will want to go back to the beginning so you can um, see the pieces and parts I pulled off of the die set because there's 11 dies to make this flower with the, the uh, leaves. But I just very lightly, oh, that's a lot of ink on there. You can do that. And I like to go over where it um, has a slit as well because then you get some of that color on the front, okay? So you'll have color on both sides because you really do see both edges when the flower is put together. Might be good to start off there. And you don't have to worry too much if some places are a little darker than others. You could even um, kind of just rub your um, sponge dauber along the parts too. Might be good to go on along the sides a little bit. do a little bit on this last piece as well. Some down here in front as well. A little bit dark that time. Okay. All right. So who remembers how we put this together? We're going to start with the smallest piece. So line them up largest to smallest. Take the smallest piece and insert it into that slit of the next size piece of your flower. And to know where exactly to position it, we just line up the back side, okay, that bottom edge of each of the backs. 
add a little bit of liquid glue to hold it in place. And when I make these, I'm only putting the glue towards the bottom, okay? You don't want to adhere these pieces flat, completely flat to each other. So that's why I'm putting only um, glue only at the bottom. Now take those two pieces combined and add them to the next size piece. Whoops. Make sure they're all tucked inside there. And match up the bottoms. Lift it up a wee bit and add some liquid glue. And here those together. And then the last piece, we're going to tuck all this into the last piece. Okay. And again, we're going to match up along the bottom. So basically, all four of those pieces are lined up together here at the bottom. So that's your thickest part, or it feels thickest because you have the glue in there and such. Take a look from the front too, make sure you got it lined up well. Okay, so there's that. And now if you want, you can use your bone folder or your fingers to pull some of those edges back. Just a little bit. Okay, just to lift them a little bit like that with your finger. Now this is the part I was going to um, share with you that I thought was kind of clever is I saw somebody, instead of pulling those edges back, or all of the edges back, they um, actually put some dimensionals between the layers. And I'm just fitting in the, the smallest size dimensional, those minis. And that gives a lift to some of the different petals. I thought that was brilliant. <laughs> and I knew I would be trying it when I saw it. So, you know, do it either way, both ways, oops, both ways give um, some nice dimension to your peony. Okay, can you, I don't know how well you can see that, but they're, if you look over the top of the flower, I can see those dimensionals in there, but they're hidden pretty well by all those petals. So you're not going to see it when it's flat on your card. And I want to fit another one in here, maybe under here. Whoops. Okay, I might do some in the back here. Actually, I think I could do a couple large ones at the back here. Or at least one large one. Oh yeah, I like that. Can you see the difference there? I like that a lot. Okay, now the only thing I haven't done is added um, my center. So I'm going to do that. And I like to just put a tiny drop of the liquid glue at the top. And I can slide that right in there and then press it down. Okay. Oh, lovely. Julie, you like it with the dimensionals too? Yeah, I think it adds a just a very different look to it. So now I'm going to add this to my card. I want to pop up the whole thing with dimensionals. I don't know if you can hear it, but the rain's coming down really hard. Just started. I have an egress window right next to my um, Um, next to my kind of up into the left of my craft table and it's got one of those coverings on the top so all the water doesn't come into it um, and uh, so it, it can be loud down here sometimes with that I'm going to add another dimensional here because I, I just want this edge to 
lay down nicely. There, that's better. And I still have all that space to tuck my leaves under. So again, I'm gonna take those leaves and all the accent pieces and match them up. So, yep. And then I'll adhere those together and add them to my card. Of course, peonies come in all different colors. Does anybody have peonies? My sister-in-law always had them and they were just beautiful. And uh, I think she had mostly pinks, but different colors. Gorgeous every single year. I think she just had the perfect spot in her yard for them. I've never tried to grow peonies, but after using this set, I wanna find a place that I can grow a peony plant. So I've been looking so many gorgeous colors, whether you're into pinks, purples, uh, whites, whatever, just gorgeous colors, soft pastel colors, bright, bold colors. Mary Lou says she has red ones and pinks. I bet they're beautiful. Somebody told me it's been a really good year for peonies too. I don't know. Whoops, came out a little fast, didn't it? Take some of that off. Okay, now I'm ready to add those to my card front. I'm gonna use some of that liquid glue and just tuck these leaves underneath. Put this little leaf on the other side this time. Yours was your plants were loaded. Okay, I've heard. I just heard it's a pink fern peony. Oh, I okay. I wonder what that means. Pink fern peony. Is that a variation or a? of our regular peony plant. Oh, beautiful. Okay, beautiful. Love it. Of course, we need some bling. Should I do the clear, the petal pink, or the frosted white? First one to respond, I will do whatever you tell me. Whatever your heart desires here. Clear, petal pink, or frosted gems. Vicki Parker says pink. You got it, girl. Do you want up here? Remember with things like this, we typically work in odd numbers. And I'm just spacing them around randomly. Um, another idea would to put, you know, maybe put like three right here instead. I wouldn't do both. Um, maybe three right here instead though. Okay, but the wonderful thing about these is no matter which ones you choose, they all look great with all of the designer series papers. You can't go wrong, okay? And they're pretty much, other than the petal pink, the other two are pretty much going to match with any colors of cardstock and DSPs that you use, okay? So, um, and if you wanted to add a sentiment, the stamp set has great sentiments. I've already used this one. Actually, I've already used them all, and no, it was this one that I lost. No, it's not this set. It's the sunflower set that I lost one of my sentiments. It's killing me. Uh, kind of an expensive mistake. I don't wanna have to rebuy the whole thing. Very fluffy leaves instead of full leaves. Sort of like an air fern. Okay, Diane, I'll have to look that up. That sounds really interesting. Peony Fern. Okay, who would like to um, win this card? I think I need to give this away today. All right. If you are still watching, I see lots of comments on there. Just type the word peony in the comments, P-E-O-N-Y, 
and you will be entered into the drawing for today's card. Okay, you need to type the word peony, P-E-O-N-Y. Alrighty, uh, that's all I have for you. Um, be sure to check my latest class to go, which is the Jar of Flowers bundle and um, some amazing cards in there. And I've got, um, I'm scheduling the next couple of classes to go as well. Um, not quite ready to go back to in-person events just yet. I don't think people are 100% comfortable, um, but that will be coming hopefully by the end of the summer. And start a group for lost stamps. Oh gosh, shouldn't we? You know, or that one little die that's missing from your set. It's crazy. And the funny thing is, most of the time, those things that go missing, I find later. They turn up, you know, they stuck to something or got slid into a, a pack of paper or something instead. So they almost always turn up. Um, only one time did I have something where I, I decided I really wanted to replace the die set. But uh, yeah, we could start a club, right, Julie? <laughs> okay, so if you want to win that card, make sure you write Peony. That's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed learning how to um, separate your dies out from the set and which ones coordinate with the... Um, stamp set. You just have to remember the three flowers and two leaves and then all the others are used um, to create your peony blossom and the three leaves. All right. I, well, I guess until next time, um, probably not doing Sunday so much anymore now that we're into summer. Um, lots of people that's family time or outdoor time. I might jump on for the occasional Sunday Facebook Live, but um, I will see you Monday morning at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on Stampin' Peace VIP for another demonstration, uh, Make It With Mary Monday. So look early Monday morning for announcement about what kinds of pieces to um, bring to the group. Last week we did a six by six um, one sheet wonder and people really seem to like that and people also like the card sketches I've been showing so that's make it with Mary Monday stamp and peace VIP group 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time you all have a wonderful weekend and please know that I appreciate you bye-bye